Everybody who has practiced endodontics has experienced an upset like breaking an instrument. When we break an instrument, it's important to assess well-angulated preoperative films and understand the factors that will influence its removal. We need to carefully note the position of the broken instrument as it relates from the occlusal table to the apical aspect of the root system. We need to carefully take different horizontally angulated films so we can better appreciate the root bulk and form and understand the depth of external root concavities. Certainly, any portion of the instrument that lies in the straightaway portion of the canal makes it intriguing whether we can remove the instrument. Said another way, if the entire segment of the broken instrument lies completely around the curvature, we won't have a very good opportunity to get direct vision and facilitate the removal efforts. Clearly, most of us that have been removing broken instruments for many years have understood that stainless steel broken instruments are quite easy to remove. However, in the advent of nickel titanium around 1992 and 1993 has led to an explosion of broken instruments and this material, when it's vibrated against with ultrasonic heat, presumably causes these instruments to refracture and we may have pieces of the broken segment come out. One of the things we've learned from the past is to make a careful radicular access. Said another way, the access should be no bigger than it would have otherwise been if there were no broken instrument. In my experience, the best tools to create radicular access are a set of Gates Glidden drills. There's two caveats. Run the Gates Glidden's between 500 and 750 RPMs. This prevents them from grabbing and being inadvertently sucked into the canal. The second suggestion is use them like brushes so we can brush away from furcal concavities and maximize remaining tooth structure. Radicular access for me starts with a Gates Glidden number four, whose maximum cross-sectional diameter is 1.1 millimeters. This instrument is restricted so that no more than one head depth extends below the orifice. The Gates Glidden three follows the four. It's used one bud depth below the four. It's working diameter is 0.9 millimeters and this is a classic preparation that has been described in many books across the world over the last 30 to 40 years. Finally a Gates Glidden II whose cross-sectional maximum diameter is 7 tenths of a millimeter and this can typically park right on the head of the broken instrument. If you begin to appreciate that each third of the root is about 3 to 5 millimeters then the coronal one-third, middle one-third, and apical one-third come to mind, and typically instruments break in the apical one-third. This means typically around three, four, or five millimeters of an instrument is usually noticed on a preoperative film. It's almost always possible to carry a Gates Glidden II through the straightaway portions of the canal and park it precisely on the coronal aspect of the broken file. Well, looking ahead, we are going to use ultrasonics to try to unwind and back this instrument out, but the problem oftentimes clinically is when you bring the ultrasonic instrument down into the root, we can't place its working tip lateral to the broken instrument. As such, years ago we described how to make a staging platform. Simply take a transmetal burr or a Joe Dandy or any other kind of a cutting instrument and cut the head of the GG2, which was 7 tenths of a millimeter, at its maximum height of contour and make a flat. Run this same number 2 back into the canal and notice that it creates a little shelf circumferentially around the head of the broken instrument. This staging platform will be an optimal way for us to place the appropriately sized ultrasonic instrument. The appropriately sized ultrasonic instrument is that instrument that can reach to the clinical field of action and also has a slim profile so we can have a line of sight lateral to the instrument. Most of these procedures, if not all these procedures, should be conducted under an operating microscope. 
try to pass the ultrasonic instrument around the broken file counterclockwise. This will tend to unwind the file and help encourage it to jump up and out of the canal. I have learned from experience over the years that if I can expose about one third of the overall length of the broken segment, I'm going to be successful and be able to remove it. Oftentimes, as we continue our trephining procedures and extend our preparation deeper, we must be aware that we're getting into the smaller diameters of the root. As such, it is appropriate to choose a smaller diameter instrument that will more conservatively remove tooth structure so we can maximize remaining dentin. Try to get the instrument to wiggle, kind of jerk around back and forth in an unwinding motion, and then finally it's jettisoned out of the canal. You can see that once the instrument is out, we can shape the canal, and this animation would show through shaping procedures how to remove the staging platform. Well, let's look at these concepts in a patient of record. On this first mandibular molar, you can see that it's almost invariable that we as specialists will go back and modify the access even a little bit more. Notice the furcal lesion. Notice the position of the broken instrument. The mesia root is quite thin, and we should expect a furcal side concavity. Once we have isolated the tooth and removed the provisional restoration, it's almost invariably that we as endodontists need to remodify the access cavity to facilitate the removal effort. After using the four, the three, and the two gates glidens as previously described, I'm showing you a modified GG2 and this is what creates a staging platform. Look at the remarkable clarity and the visual acuity of this broken instrument with a staging platform. I bet you're thinking you could do it too. Choose the ultrasonic instrument that has the sufficient reach to the clinical field of action, and also notice that it has a small diameter profile which allows me to continuously view the broken segment as I circumferentially trephen around the broken fragment. The assistant, importantly, is using a white MAC tip and a Stropco three-way adapter so she can blow air and collimate the air precisely into the field of action. You can see that the instrument has jumped up and out of the canal. A film can verify the removal effort. Certainly, the moment of truth is, can you place an instrument to length? It is always reassuring to know you can bypass the staging platform. Obviously, deep shaping will blend the deep shape and remove the staging platform. Notice the post-operative film. I don't think any dentist would look at this post-operative film and feel there has been excessive tooth structure removal. Notice the shapes are clean, conical, with the narrowest diameter apically. Notice the furcal canal, which expands the furcal lesion. Complete endodontics is the cornerstone of restorative and reconstructive dentistry. Let's review broken instrument removal. Let's take three well-angulated different horizontal angles to appreciate the various removal factors. At times, a referral would be appropriate. Let's establish great radicular access with emphasis on maximizing remaining dentin. We can almost always park a Gates Glidden II on top of the head of the broken instrument. The GG2 may further be altered to facilitate a staging platform if it's required. Use progressively smaller ultrasonic instruments as we work progressively deeper into canals. It is critically important to be able to continuously see as we go ahead and do the removal procedures. I've always felt that microscopes in conjunction with ultrasonic instruments has advanced microsonic techniques and allowed us to remove most broken instruments, certainly if the head of the broken instrument lies in the straightaway portions of the canal. Okay, we've just gone through a method to manage a broken instrument removal. So the good news is, as you're out there shaping canals, you have permission to have an upset because now you know that we don't measure the doctor's performance when everything is going well. We measure the doctor's performance by what he or she does when things don't go well. Now you're armed with a method to remove most broken instruments. 
My only caveat would be, there's an old expression, if you can see it, you can do it. Think microscope.